Hi, and welcome to the Midco Scuba Podcast. My name is Zach Haddock. This is a podcast I put together so that uh, my friends and I could talk about um, an agreed passion, and that's scuba diving. Uh, my friends, we are all professional divers. We range from uh, recreational instructors all the way through technical level divers and instructors. And we just want to share our passion with you. We're in the mid coast, right in the center of the United States, halfway between the east and the west coast, landlocked, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Arguably, we would say that our location just makes our passion that much stronger because when we dive, we really mean it. Thanks for listening in, and I hope you enjoy the show. It's a pretty common question. What's the difference between technical and recreational scuba diving? Uh, There's some pretty small fundamental differences, but there's some pretty large ones. So in this episode, my good friends Chris Budenz and Scott Kramer and I are going to talk about um, what what is the differences and what are the considerations you need, be it from equipment to training to risk versus reward. So uh, enjoy as we talk through the differences between tech diving, rec diving, why we got into either or, and what we love about each one. Uh, thanks so much for listening and check back for more episodes. <laughs> Circus is coming through. Everybody knows that when you purchase a ticket, you expect to get a show or take a look at me. I'm just a clown. Oh, shit. It's the Mid Coast Scuba Podcast. Episode, I don't know, one or two or three or four, one of them. Somewhere in that yeah. range. Some in where in that range. Uh, so today we're uh, we're going to delve into technical versus recreational. Uh, why you would want to do either one, what the differences are. Um, yeah, I'll fire right out of the gate, Chris. Um, Shoot. What? Uh, how do you define the difference between recreational and technical diet? That is a really good question. Um, <clears throat> I think that that question in general, there's a lot of different facets to it just because all the literature I've read, there's so many different definitions really. No one can really define technical diving, but to me, technical diving really comes down to planning, self-sufficiency and planning. Yeah, whether you're in an overhead environment, but you're staying within, the, in, within your NDLs, or whether you're in an open water environment and now you're going beyond your no decompression limits to where now you have decompression, you, it, it's really the the planning, the self sufficiency, and, and the the equipment. That, I guess that's what it really boils down to for me. I'd agree with that. I think that's a good answer. What yeah. about you, Scott? Uh, I would also agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, at the base, or <clears throat> not base, but high level for me. Um, it's it, at the most fundamentally simple level. It's just, can I go to the surface or can I not? Right? Yeah, I would yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, no, I think it's going to be a good show. I'm glad to have both of you guys here. Um, I think we're going to have some fun with it. So just uh, for a little preface of the Mid Coast Scuba Podcast, it's just friends sitting around having drinks at our deco stop yeah. or deco hang and just talking about diving. Right. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about? Um, well, I've got a actually a good question for Chris since he was talking about <clears throat> um, some equipment. I'm in the stuff. hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you explain? Literally. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, yeah. So you were talking about, based on Zach's question, that some equipment is also some definition of technical diving. Correct. So can you explain the equipment differences that you would that you're talking about between technical diving and recreational diving? Yeah, um, I mean, depending on what piece of equipment you're talking about, right? So sure. if let's let's take flashlights for example. It's a relatively simple piece of equipment that I think most divers own, <clears throat> most serious divers own because they want to do night dives and look at coral or where you are a tech diver. Uh, you know, a tech flashlight is going to have a battery life that's a lot longer. Uh, it's going to have a higher burn. Uh, you know, more. More lumens, so to speak. Sorry, I, I traumatic brain injury that word. <laughs> um, so you know, when you look at the two different lights, it's, it's obviously cost would be a number one standout point. 
but really it's it's what the equipment's used for and you know when you look at the bcs uh, having dual bladders uh being more rugged being able to take multiple tanks adapted to it like a back plate wing, wing system even though it looks very simplistic it's actually more complex than your standard issued standard put together bcd that you buy from us buy from a shop or from a company nothing wrong with them we all own those ones yeah. but the back plate <clears throat> wing system is designed to look simplistic because it is but actually be very complex in the fact that you can rig it in different ways um so that would be my biggest i mean i guess is that what you were kind of looking for in your question yeah just like yeah just some of the some of the key differences and yeah yeah i, I would that. say yeah. yeah it's just functionality of the equipment being able to do longer longer dives um harsher environments yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think on the on that note, like a lot of tech gear looks more simplistic, but it really just comes from the standpoint of there's just less failure points. Yeah. Right. Right. Less uh, gadgets. Yeah. Things like that. Less gizmos. <laughs> gizmos. I see a lot of gizmos when I'm on a dive boat. Yeah. And right. there's nothing wrong with the gizmos. Some of those gizmos are really cool. They're actually pretty neat. But when you get into the tech side of things, it, you're, you're literally putting gadgets and gizmos and cords and things that don't need to be there that are just become entanglement hazards yeah. become failure points yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> stuff yeah trinkets yep yeah <clears throat> so i'm gonna throw one at you scott okay oh uh, thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know both uh recreational scuba diving and also tech they 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 both offer unique experiences sure. right um what in your mind what what drives you to one or the other what what are those yes things for you sure um i think that has changed throughout the years yeah. obviously um with the more experience i gain more classes i take more places i travel um recreational which is obviously why we all originally got into this um for the most part um, you know, it was about seeing the fish and the coral and just the experience of being underwater, uh, you know, with your friends or family or loved ones and just like experiencing this whole different world. Um, and then for me, just as, as my course has worked itself through, like I just wanted to do more underwater. Yeah. And so getting into the technical side for me, uh, was more about spending more time underwater doing bigger things seeing shipwrecks seeing caves seeing things that not everybody gets to see on an everyday basis when they're recreational scuba diving yeah. now with that said i still absolutely love to just strap on a one tank and you know on a in the bahamas and and just do recreational diving i mean that's still a, a love of mine all the time but I still have that drive for that technical side uh, just to do more. Yeah, I, I'm just smiling because raise your hand if you've ever had that. Thank God I just have one tank and one rig. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I could go straight to the water. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I, but I mean, even even for me, like like you said, it's, it's, you know, I don't look at like when I either run or just go on a trip. If I run a trip for the shop or just go on a trip down to like Grand Cayman or you know st croix or wherever and just go dive a 40 foot dive and just look at fish it's still fun to me like oh, that yeah. I, it still hasn't lost that allure the allure that i want to go do it yeah um I, I would honestly can if i can add something here yeah. uh, you know recently what i'm doing right now actually is i've actually had a lot of thought process into this like with recreational diving if i took a class right like a night diver class i was now a night diver i could just go night dive with tech, you know, you get into the trimix side, you get into rebreather. Now it's like, okay, I got to go do training dives because I'm going on a trip in two years to Truck Lagoon, and there's wrecks at 250 feet that I want to penetrate. So now every dive I'm doing is now, okay, I'm going down the lake and going to 60 feet with the equipment that I'm going to wear in truck just to get <clears throat> comfortable in that setup. So it, it's, it's almost like it becomes more... I don't want to say intensive being, being the right word, but it becomes more of a focus. Like you're focusing on, okay, I have a trip in two years. 
I have to do dives, specific dives for a reason. And as a former military, former Marine, like I like that. It's training for a purpose. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a workup, right? Yeah, it's a workup. Yeah. Like everything I'm doing is a workup right yeah. now for truck. Yeah. Like that's my goal. Yeah. You know, do do it, do it in a environment where a failure is manageable, mm-hmm. right? Right. So, yep. or, or or realistically, I guess what I'm getting at is you know that adage of you you plan for the best, but you prepare for the worst. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. What about you? You got anything, Chris? Oh, yeah. So actually, since we're talking about equipment and and we've kind of been on that topic of equipment um, and kind of going from rec to tech, right? Uh, so what for you guys, I'll, I'll go with Zach here. What was your most valuable piece of equipment that you bought <clears throat> or that you would, you would maybe advise someone to buy if they were going to go like, okay, I'm a recreational diver now. I'm just getting into this, but I want to go into tech. So I want to make a purchase, but I want to be able to use it mm. throughout recreational into tech to where it's, now I'm very familiar with this piece of equipment. What would be your number one item? Wow. That's that, a good, that's a great that question. question. <laughs> Was not expecting such a great question out of you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Really? I mean. Uh, He's like, that's more of a Scott question. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I thought that was a me question. No, that's well, great. Yeah, that's probably more accurate. <laughs> that's great. Um, No, and on the That sp- question was brought to you by Iron Horse Distillery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and on the spot too. So honestly, um. I, I I I think for somebody who's on the recreational <clears throat> on the recre ugh, on the recreational it's, we're in the Midwest everybody yeah, it's, it's, super it's, super it's like it's <clears throat> it's Caribbean humidity right now with no breeze there's no ocean we're in a garage <laughs> and the farmers are tilling fields so yeah. allergies are rampant right so um, no if I'm on the rec side the recreational side go into the tech side. I think that number one purchase right out. Well, let's back up just a little bit. When you get to the point where you're going to transition over to technical diving, the rental concepts pretty much out the window, right? Or you're not, you're not going to rank You're going to have your, right. You're, you're starting to purchase your own stuff, but so that number one thing I think is you need to get a, a good technical computer. Right, yep. because you're going to be using that for your decompression stops. Mm-hmm. You're going to be, I mean, we, all three of us, we live and dive our computers. We dive with two or three of them. Three, three, yep. right? So I think that's your number one purchase. You need something that does gradient factors. You need something that can do deco plans. Um, yeah, even if you don't know what those things are. Even yet. if you don't know what them, you need a computer can do that because honestly, that's that's day one when you do your first tech class, especially if you're doing like a ANDP or Tech Forty. Yep. It's you're gonna start. Or you have an instructor that makes you sit down and chart out everything right. and use tables. Right. That was fun, wasn't it, Scott? It was. Yes. Right. But but you're gonna live and die by that computer. Mm-hmm. So that's your number one purchase: the computer. I mean. Uh, for all intents and purposes, if you're using quality gear like Scuba Pro, we're not sponsored by Scuba Pro, but that's what I dive. Uh, my Scuba Pro Mark 19 that I dive with recreationally, guess what? That's on my side mount setup. That's on my back mount doubles. That's the same regulator I use. So that really is just a singular piece of, of equipment. On the rec side, though, I would have no problem doing a recreational ndl dive with a mares puck pro a 90 dollar computer it's fine i'll do that dive yeah will i go down to 180 feet in bon air with that computer no right it's either going to be my predicts or my garmin yeah that's it yeah i'm not going in a cave with that puck right right it's not so i think the computer is your number one the like hey i'm getting ready to switch looking ahead what do i need to buy first because that's also i think arguably the piece of equipment that has the longest learning curve you need to know it inside and out yeah right Right? yeah you need to know every aspect and you know one of the things i've noticed about computers is uh as they're becoming more everyday wearables and you know you have multiple companies being able to do that um you know sometimes just sitting around at home while you're watching tv you can just start jacking around with dive stuff that you have no idea what it even is like ccr mode yeah well now you're at least learning what the buttons do and what these things kind of are doesn't mean you can go dive it, but it means you're starting to learn it. So then if you do jump into that class, you now have a basic understanding of how your computer operates. So I would agree with you. 
Um, and actually, to play devil's advocate on that, I, I've heard a lot of people say, well, what about just go ahead and get a backplane wing? Yeah. And I go, well, that's not necessarily a bad answer because a backplane wing can be set up for doubles, yeah. side mount, single tank on your back. I mean, what about you, Scott? Uh, would you agree with computer 100% or would you think that maybe there's other stuff? Because I know when you got into diving, I remember this. Well, when I got back into diving. When you got, sorry. Yeah. Let me rephrase that. When you got back into diving, when you and I start, first started hanging out, yep. you said, I want to go tech. And the first thing they set you up with was a uh, sms what was it the 100 100 yeah which yep. is a trash but well <laughs> but you were compared set up, to what some of the stuff what we have now, now but but yeah. but yeah but set you up with an sms 100 but you were able to use that one vc throughout your initial tech training yeah whereas i had a, a nighthawk and i had to basically put that in a closet and go buy a completely yeah. another vc when i got into side mount so yeah i mean i would think a computer is probably my number one that if someone was asking me that came into the shop mm -hmm. a computer would probably be the first thing that i would push yeah if, and, and i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt you but no, looking from the standpoint of i want to preface this by no one should hey i just got my advanced open water or i just got my rescue next step is i'm going to go take tech for or i'm going to go do a and dp that is not the progression, right? It's a, it's a, not it's in a, my opinion. it is a process. It's not a, it's not a race to it. <clears throat> so when I say the computer, and I guess I'm trying to justify my standpoint, <laughs> um, the computer, you can start learning it right away. Um, and then, you know, it, it, for most people, there are those people out there that have the bankroll. They're just going to go in the dive shop and be like, set me up with tech care. Most people are going to do it incrementally. Yeah. Right. Yep. So for me, the first piece has got to be the computer. Yeah. Then Why? Go but I mean, I tell my recreational students, your first piece of gear you should leave and look at purchasing is a dive computer. Yeah, for sure. I'll like, leave it on the rec side. Yeah. yeah. EC, you know, you can rent those. Regs, you can rent those. But a computer, that's the brain. You know, that's. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the great thing with a, a good computer is it can take you anywhere from, you know, open water diver you mm -hmm. know where you're diving you know just on vacation with your family one time every couple of years all the way through the type of diving that we do you know when you're doing you know rebreathers and you know trimix and you know all that kind of stuff that one computer can take you from just you're doing your simple diving <clears throat> on air where you're just kind of out with your kid or something you know at a 40 foot dive yeah all the so way I'm down using the there. same computer yeah yeah I, yeah i'm using the same exact computer. same computer yeah. yeah yeah chris that was a fan fucking tastic question really thank was. you i think that yeah. deserves me another uh <laughs> another drink of <laughs> shot union, of this fine union horse <laughs> union horse reunion straight rye whiskey made right here in lenexa kansas <laughs> it's actually pretty good it's pretty smooth it's um, like 90 what, what are you gonna do when union horse picks this up and like a case of it shows up and your wife is like what the fuck is this yeah uh, <laughs> i'm gonna send it to your house and um you and i are gonna go to another fine establishment down the road that we went to last time <laughs> no we're not no we're not, no, we're not. divorced <clears throat> all right uh so wait you're running this show aren't you yeah i guess I am. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah uh so I think this is a pretty good one. And I'm going to throw myself under the bus because I, I I will. I like I, it when you do that. Yeah. I, I, it's one of my favorite things. It's one, usually <laughs> one, one of the most hilarious points. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys did your homework and you formulated some great questions. I use chat GPT. <laughs> so I'm going to give credit no, he, to chat. He oh, used chat I did. Oh, too. you did too. I did too. <laughs> but I literally sat here and wrote my questions out after I got here. We boosted yeah, my O2 yeah. bottle. So. so, but I actually like this one. Um, <clears throat> um yeah. yeah i like this one <laughs> again midwest it's terrible 95 percent humidity oh, it's it is hot 90 degrees here in the garage yeah. but it's cloudy it's, it's it looks cloudy. like it's gonna it needs to it storm needs to oh rain. it would feel so good if it stormed it would really so um safety let's talk about that it's it's number one mm. in both forms of diving yeah. recreational and technical but Scott, what are the differences? Because we approach both of those very differently. Yes, very, very much differently. Yeah. Um, I think 
I mean, that's a great question too, because there's like that has so many talking points. Mm -hmm. Um, I think on the recreational side, just to the core of it, I mean, obviously the, we start diving with, you know, DSMBs so we can, you know, flag the surface in case something happens. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, there's, there's a lot more of the buddy team, Mm -hmm. you know, but because most of the time you're diving with one air source, and your buddy is really your secondary air source. So that's really kind of your safety net Yeah. where when it gets into the technical side, even though we do a lot of buddy or team diving, we have to be so self-sufficient yeah. um, in case something happens. Cause there's a lot of the time where there's not enough stuff. If something goes wrong with, with right. one diver, right. if you, if they don't have their own. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the safety comes a lot into the, just the planning portion of it. Um, yeah. I, for me personally, I feel like when you're doing a re- recreational dive, the, the safety plan is a quick little, hey, between you and your dive buddy on the boat, yeah. um, you know, do I have my couple things and, you know, let's get going where on the technical side, it's a, you know, it's a conversation on the whole drive down to either the lake or the, to the, out to the boat or whatever. It's a, yeah. it's a lot well, more thought even, out I process. would even say like in Pensacola, it's the night before it's sitting yeah, around yeah. Even over a couple of brewskis, just sitting there going over the dive plan, oh, going yeah. over everybody's deco plans, yeah. Yeah. everybody's run schedule. You know, it's, it's it's a lot more planning for sure. Yeah. So I think the safety question can also be tied into the planning yeah. question. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, and and all throughout, I think it's pretty easy to see when you're on a dive boat or just anywhere on a dive who the tech divers are. Oh, for sure. Because we start explaining to each other about because we all dive somewhat different rigs usually in teams we might all be the same right but like you guys dive pretty much the same rig we're very similar very similar yeah you're Um, not i'm not right right? but when we go dive together you guys know my shit and i know yours yep exactly um you don't see that on the rec side it's more just like you said it's the basic hey um and also um I, i think on the tech side like the first and foremost is can I be self-reliant? Yep. And then if not, then what other resources do I have? Where on the rec side, it's, I, I should always have my buddy there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the neat things I saw one time, um, and I forget what study this was, it might've been a Dan study. And it kind of looked at like the percentage of dive injuries and accidents on like a bell curve. And, they noticed that on the recreational side of diving, like the injuries and accidents kind of peaked and, and at, at a specific group of divers. Yeah. And most people, you know, if I ask them this question, they go, Oh, or it's, it's gotta be tech divers. It's gotta be tech divers. I'm like, no, you hear a lot about tech divers when, when something bad happens, because typically a small incident turns catastrophic. Um, it was actually divers with about a hundred dives, in that group instructors because you become confident and cocky but yet without the actual training yeah without the real life experience right i mean and what i would say the training because you know this could start us down a whole nother rabbit hole about the training side of rec recreational and in tech and, and the difference in intensities um however uh to to kind of circle back and leave it what we were talking about I think it's kind of six, one half dozen, the other, uh, it, there's two sides of the coin recreational. You don't have the training or a lot of the experience, but you're relatively safe. Yeah. You really are at the level that you're doing. I mean, th- these agencies have done a great job at really tears stepping. Yeah. <clears throat> However, there's a point where you do given you're given enough rope to definitely hang yourself with. And I think that's where maybe some of the concepts of tech safety should come into play because you're starting to get divers who are, getting cocky and complacent complacent is probably the best yeah that, i would say complacent i've seen some cocky divers uh, you scott <laughs> but mostly complacent you're right i guess the right word would be complacent well it i think every and i've done it i'm yeah, not sitting well, i'm not sitting here like i'm on a soapbox like I've that, done that, that's what i was gonna oh, i have stories <clears throat> we should do a whole story of yeah, what uh, not <clears throat> to do i'll throw myself under the bus right now <laughs> <laughs> i uh so i don't like omni swivels but I've got right. them on my rec unit. Yep. I've got two of them that I swap back and forth. And there's one 
that I used for, I went past the service limit on it. And guess what? Thank God I was in the pool. You service them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank God I was and in And I'm the, a technician. <laughs> thank God I was in the pool, but yeah. um, uh, failed. one of our other instructors, uh, the, the my kit was in the bottom of the pool. We're, we're, we're doing a class and Marty goes, there's a bunch of bubbles coming from your rig. And I walk over there. It just popped apart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah yeah it helps you, if you keep that screw in it helps if you keep the screw in but complacent complacency kills right? oh does. for sure it does uh you know when i was doing uh when when i was doing my cave training my cave instructor um uh, we were, were going in um actually it was post-graduation dive we're now doing stage cave we're going into p3 and his uh primary light failed oh like really for real. Oh. Like before we even descended, we're at the surface. Right. And he goes over and he starts pulling it apart and screwing with it. And I noticed he kept like looking over his shoulder at me. And I just sat there and not saying anything. I was like, you know, he's an instructor. And then didn't question a thing. And we go and we do the dive. And we come back out. And as soon as we hit the surface for the debrief, Did he, yell he at you? ripped into me <laughs> about not saying anything about his primary light not working. I could see that. <laughs> and, That's only because we all know who he is. So. Right. But it, but it hammered. Funny. It, but, but it but it hammered that home. He go and he told me. He said, but listen. That... He goes, listen. Tech divers are the worst about getting complacent because you've got so much training. Yeah. You think that you know it all. It's like, don't take any chances, especially when you're diving with somebody you don't know. Don't trust that they know what they're doing. Yep. You know? I mean, how many times have we been in a cave where we got done with the dive and you or I have looked at each other and said, like, that yeah, one time your neck seat was too tight. Yeah. Yeah. And you were like, dude, I'm like, why didn't you just turn the dive? You're like, um, I didn't want to ruin it for you. Like, yeah. Because we do that. Yeah. And I've done the same thing. Like, I just was not <clears throat> feeling that, but I don't know why I didn't turn it. Like, I was pretty much in a wouldn't say a full on panic, but I was in close to panic. Like had I had a problem, could have snowballed. Oh, it would have been bad. But I, I think it's those things. And I think you guys will agree with me that we will turn or dive way quicker than most recreational divers will. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, no, for sure. It's not happening. Right. Yeah. Like, and for a lot smaller thing, most, most recreational divers, they do that. They're like, I don't want to ruin it. And they, yeah, they'll try to tough it out. And we're, 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 usually have the mind like mm, this isn't the place to yeah to mess around with. especially like i mean i know obviously the three of us do a lot of the same style diving yeah. I, I would turn a dive in a cave for me personally way quicker than i would just a deep dive right. because of equipment because i know with the equipment that i have and the redundancies i have in open water i can still get myself to the surface in a cave it's a whole different story right. so for sure. for you sure. know it's all situational i mean true but you're in a virtual overhead though. No, I know. And, but, and so that's but worst again, case scenario, but, yeah, but it's one but, of those deals. But again, and what I'm getting at though, is that just mentally we're totally cool with turn and dive. Oh, for sure. Yeah. A tech diver is never going, you know, we, we always say that any diver can turn a dive yep. at any time for any reason. And I tell all my students, I'm always like, look, if somebody gives you shit for that, don't ever dive with them again. Yeah. They're, they're an asshole. Right. On the tech side, you'll never catch flack for turning a dive. No, for never. any reason. It's like, okay, whatever. And and I mean, we both have to, and we, and yeah. honestly, like, for those of you out there listening, I just a quick little, him and I, Scott and I have dove for years, and so have Zach. We've all dove for years together, and we, we relentlessly beat on each other yeah, pretty yeah. bad about stuff. Um, I don't think I've ever, like, I think I've turned dives just because I was, I, I think I didn't go to a dive once or twice because, you know, I tied one on the night before like an idiot. Didn't go, and no one said a, I didn't get any flack for it. In fact, if anything, I said they were probably the smart thing to do, dude. You probably mm -hmm. saved your own life because you didn't. Yeah. You you were too tired. You were dehydrated. You just would have been a problem. Yeah. Like I, I mean, honestly, like I I thought the whole time I was gonna get flack for, oh, you know, get get a bunch of shit basically because I made poor decisions. Yeah. Instead, it was like, no, you made the right choice, dude. We would have probably given you more shit had you tried to show up and try to get <clears> in the water. Oh, right? I, I, agree. So, I agree with that. But it's still hard for us to turn a dive, though. Yeah. And, 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 and so, yeah, I could see definitely see how, like, recreational divers, it's it's hard to impose that on the students that, yeah. as an instructor, like, hey, it's okay to turn a dive. Yeah. It's okay I know to we, not to I know we to tell our dive. students that 
at least I tell my students that every class. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's part of what we teach is. Well, it's in the course. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, it's most definitely, I really try to harp <laughs> that in it. But even then, you know, it kind of sometimes you can see it goes in one year and out the other. Yeah. Uh, for that. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and some of the time, too, like, they turn the dive and you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, Zach, I got a question for you then. All right. So, talking about technical diving and caves and all that kind of stuff what are some risks that you see that are involved in technical diving that recreational divers may never encounter yeah that's a good one too i mean the most obvious is getting bent right so it doesn't well actually i'm going to back that up because it's kind of twofold the most obvious one is drowning right that's always the most prevalent um but it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. So you look at technical and overhead, technical or decompression. Um, usually in the overhead, we're also doing decompression. In a cave, it gets a little bit different with the decompression versus open water. Um, but realistically, it's that emergency and needing to get to the surface with urgency. So I would say getting bent is probably the most prevalent. Right. Um, and and that could, that's something that can sneak up on you even if you do everything right right oh I mean, for sure nobody knows when their number comes up all those things are theoretical um <clears throat> uh complacency getting bent um i think those are those are the number one ones yeah gotcha i was saying another thing i would probably throw in there is as technical divers we have just so much more gear yeah that we probably run into gear related issues more often yeah than a standard o- recreational diver that that own and operate their own equipment yeah, I mean, and I, I'd probably throw back the argument on that, though, that that's something we train for, and that's we it, have redundancy for that. It is, but, you yeah. know, like I, like the, the question was more like, what is something that we Like might... my analyzer. Oh, so like you're, you're, that, not, yeah. you're not talking about physical. Like me trying yeah. to analyze yeah. some gas today. Yeah, yeah something I, that, that, took a that us as technical divers might encounter that a recreational diver wants. <sighs> I mean, yeah, yes. there's just so many. Yeah, I, yeah, I just, you're, you're know, I, just I don't even get upset yeah. about it anymore. I just go, it's part of my life. That's yeah. just what yeah. it is. Yeah, like buy yes. no. yes. I just go, fuck, I got to is... this now. God yes, okay, glad you clarified. So gear-wise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a whole big fucking open book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're all in debt up to our eyeballs. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you, you have to have backups, <laughs> of backups of everything. Um, yeah, I mean, God, if you're on the rebreather, sensor goes bad. Now we got to replace the sensor. Um, you know, wires come out. You, know, you got to cancel a whole dive because you didn't bring your backup. Right. Wires. Yeah. Like, um, like sensor wires. Like I'm talking two little itty bitty wires. I yeah. didn't, I didn't charge my primary light before I go in the water. Um, right. Just shit. Like, well, I mean, right, right there. Like that experience I had with my cave instructor, his primary light just shit the bed. It just quit working for no yeah, reason. Yeah, it's real fun to flood a fifteen hundred dollar light. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and just go. Well, that's what happened to Jesse um, <clears throat> yeah. when we were down in Florida. He had just <sighs> bought a brand new can light and oh, yeah. flooded yeah. it on the he very first the X thirty five from Dive Right yeah. and flooded it the first. Now, dive. luckily, <laughs> Dive Right was like, "Here you go." Well, Lamar was with us. Yeah, I remember <laughs> so that. Lamar's yeah, Lamar like, was like, "Oh, me." Why well, can't that's not right? That. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about this. But actually, last time we were in Bonaire, <clears throat> you and I go down. Oh, that's so <laughs> we, we're down at one hundred and thirty five feet, and I've got I've got my brand new um, oh Dive yeah, Right wreck. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the bladder. Blue. Well, it, it was, I, I'd, I'd had it for like two months and I kept noticing that if I really inflated it, I could hear a hissing. And I was like, hey, I thought it was the way the angle of the uh, inflator was hitting on my uh, 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 manifold. It's like, well, it's just, it's popping it open or whatever. <clears throat> Didn't think much of it. I dove in a lake probably a half dozen times. We get to Bonaire. <laughs> the first time you and I go down and we're diving down, you and uh, Brian are off. We're watching you off. And I keep inflating and I hear blah, 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 blah. I, blah, 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 blah. I could keep seeing the blah, 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 blah because it was coming into my face. <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it just keeps bubbling. I'm like, hey, I'm not, this is just the way it's been. Yada, yada, it's fine. Anyway, fast forward to the next day when we're getting ready to um, do our Helitrox. Excuse me. And um, I talked to Zach Richardson, owner of uh, Technical Diving Services Bon Air. Great okay. company, by the way. Great He's company. Great, great company, yeah. Um, I I talked to Zach about it and I say um, hey man like this doesn't seem right I think the inflator's hitting on the crossbar and we pull the wing apart 
it was a manufacturing defect. <laughs> <laughs> there was just a huge hole around. It wasn't even welded shut. I do remember. Like it was that close to just <laughs> popping open, and I was going to have to climb back up the reef. That would have been a terrible day for both. <laughs> it would have been a terrible day for both of us. <laughs> but uh, credit to to dive right. As soon as we uh, Zach swapped me out with one he had, and I get back and I I let uh, Lamar know at dive right, and they sent me a new one like that. I mean, credit to Zach Richardson though. The guy's smart as hell. Smart like, he, as hell. He yeah. knows so much about tech. Like yeah. he's one of the few instructors outside of like Lamar and some of these other people that I've trained yeah. with. Um, he's as cool as the backside of pillow. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. Um, you know, what about health guys? Like, has anybody thought about that? Cause I feel like when I got into tech diving, my, and I'm a bad example of this cause I just became a father not too long ago. So <laughs> I've got the baby weight on me right now. But, but when I first really started getting into tech, I noticed that my physical fitness and my health were more important to me because a, the equipment is five times more complex and harder to get on. And there's more of it. And even on a hot day like today, if we were down at Beaver Lake, we would be throwing, if we were doing a dive to 150 feet, we'd be throwing on thick undergarments and a dry suit with multiple tanks, then a rebreather. Wanting to die. Wanting to wanting die. Wanting to just die. I mean, <laughs> I shoot I, me at this point. But that also kind of plays back into my, my story about, you know, what I talked about me bailing on a dive because I tied one on too much. And that was earlier on in my tech career because I was thinking like recreational, like, Oh, I've dove hung over so many times, but then it was like, it, something stuck out in my head. Like, Hey, yeah. you're pushing limits here. Yeah. Your body's not processing nitrogen the same. So what would you guys say about physical fitness? Do you think that's definitely been, it's definitely harder on your body with the equipment. And then just the ND, just the fact that you're in decompression, I'd like to start with this. Yeah, you can go for that. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) We're all like, ooh, I want to talk about. (laughs) So, so yeah, uh, I'm a big guy. I have been my entire life. Uh, When I was in the seventh grade, I was six foot one, 230 pounds. Always been a big guy. This is just my body type. Yeah. Um, But it's something that sticks in my mind a lot. No, it's something that sticks in my mind um, all the time. But, um, to that end, I am a pretty, I'm a very active guy. I'm very mobile. Um, but uh, um, I am, now that I have become a tech diver, very much more cognizant of my yeah. health than what I was before. Yeah, I don't oh, think you need sure, to be yeah. a Navy SEAL. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, not yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, no. like even with me, I'm more cognizant of how's my heart doing? I'm 41 yeah, years old yeah. now. Like, yeah. how's my blood pressure? Yeah. Even things like that are, ooh, maybe I should watch what I eat because I have a trip coming up yep. in a few months. So it's not about looking good in a bathing suit. It's, well, it's about fitting in my equipment. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's also about, like, I don't want to be sitting there huffing and puffing on that boat when it's 90 degrees out and I'm trying to strap a dry suit on. You're going to be doing that anyways, but I don't want to be huffing and puffing, barely being able to get my fan on because yeah. I can't bend because my dry suit's too tight. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got that going on since I've had that back surgery. You know, yeah. getting fins on for mm-hmm. me is a tough thing. So yeah. it's I'm way more cognizant of, you know, Your flex- stretching. Flexibility. Yeah, flexibility. yeah. yeah. So yeah just little things, right? You know, things to that nature. And, you know, I mean, we've, we've all dove together. We're in the middle of the dive. I start kicking weird because I start cramping because yeah. of, you know, either – my back or my mm-hmm. leg or something. So, you know, for, for me, physical fitness is huge. I, and I, I'm obviously a, a large g- gentleman as well. Yeah. Well, also, so, when, well, I also think too, when you look at the tech side of things, right. Mm-hmm. By the time most divers can, can afford to get into tech, yeah. they're older. Yeah. So yeah, you, most, you, most tech divers are not 20, 21 year old, 18 year old. Yeah. Most aren't. Yeah. Most aren't. You have some now. Yeah. But most of them are in their 40s, 50s. I mean, how many people you see down in cave country taking an intro cave class and they're in their 50s or 60s? Yeah. 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 It's. I mean, that's, to me, that's, I mean, kudos to them. But at the same time, I'm like, you are about to get a lesson in pain. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. You're about to understand what, when we say a class means this is going to be a hard class. Yeah. You're yeah. going to understand what that means. Yeah. So. If you don't mind, can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Please. I think it's if, if you guys are good, are we? Yeah, good we're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, guys, uh, you know, one thing we're mid coast, 
We have a dog. <laughs> we got, well, we got the garage doors open, so the neighborhood <laughs> yeah. is also part of this podcast. Right? It's the Midwest. There's a dog fight. <laughs> There's a dog fight. <laughs> There's a dog fight. Um, so being, speaking of that, let's going to intro us to my next question. So being for you guys, since we have a, probably a lot more Midwest divers listening to us or people that want to dive in the Midwest, what is the hardest part about being a tech diver in the Midwest? For those people that are like recreational divers here that want to get into being a tech diver, what is the hardest part about being a tech diver here in the Midwest? I would say location. Well, I mean, I mean obviously, I just but but more specifically specific. about the location, because yeah. yes, the location oh, is sure. in the Midwest. But... Well, I mean, there's obviously there's some more gear involved uh, doing tech diving here than there would be, you know, if we were in the Bahamas, right? Yeah. We have dry suits, we have hoods, we have to have gloves just more because of the temperature of the water. Right, right. You know, um, for me, that's probably the biggest difference is is just the temperature differences in, in the water versus, you know, tech diving in Bonaire or Bahamas or Grand Cayman or wherever, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. for, for me, that's, that's always been the hardest for me because, you know, like you said, we have to get dry suits and undergarments and all that kind of stuff on, on in the middle of the winter, of the middle of the summer to go just 150 feet in a, in a lake. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to give a, a specific case study on that. So like right now I am trying to rack up hours on my rebreather. Right. Same. Uh, I think we all are. Yeah, yeah. we all yeah. are. And it's, um, it, it's kind of difficult here. I mean, technically could we go down to Hillsdale Lake and strap on the rebreather and put on hours? Sure. At 20 feet swimming in chocolate milk. Right. Right. We could. We'd get bored real fucking quick. Yep. And it would be terrible. Um, so putting you know, getting the getting the work up dives for me in the Midwest, that is the that is the biggest challenge. Like mm -hmm. so if I'm gonna go I and we I try to overlap. We're all family men, we're all working men, um, we're also all instructors. We we go down, we do classes. So for me, if I can get down the day before a class is going to work, then I can get in the lake. That's always still a challenge with the right, wife. Right, like, hey, right. I'm leaving a day before right, with, right. The, with the bros. Like, right. And she's like, why? I'm like, well, because you don't understand. This is my <laughs> one time. But you're going to be diving all weekend. Yeah. You get that a lot. Yeah. yeah. But so, <clears throat> so uh, getting down there and then getting the time, but the reality is as you get down there and it's like, okay, we can get rigged up. You never get as much time as what you're hoping for, right? So um, that's the biggest deal for me is like get even enough enough of those workup dives um, yeah. because it is technically um, for a quality what I'm going to call a quality dive for us. And you guys correct me if you don't agree. We got to go down to Beaver, which is four hours away from us. So if we want to do it in a day, we can, but we get up at five or on the road by six. We do a two, three hour dive and then it's seven or eight at night by the time we get back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Done that. Yeah. 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 So uh, for me in the Midwest as a tech diver, that is the biggest um, barrier is just um, a tech dive. It's not like we're in Bon Air, like where Zach was saying. Just, when, he, when he got his chop and he needed his hundred hours to become a chop instructor, he's like, it took me like less than a month. Yeah. It's like, cause, I, cha I changed my answer. That was a yeah. way better answer. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, but you're you're somewhere like Bon Air where literally you're just like right there. You go 100 yards from your car and you're you can go do a 150 foot dive. So yeah. I 100 percent agree with you on all of that. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, though, it's yeah. the, the logistics, yeah. I think ultimately boils down to me. I think the answer I was looking for, if this was a test question, was logistics. And the yeah. reason why I say that. We actually have some really good dive sites. Yes, yeah. it's hard to get to. I mean. Even for you recreational divers, Bonterre Mine. Yeah. It's five yeah. hours away from Kansas City. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to know what diving in a cave is like without having the training or putting the money into it or realizing you want to do it, yep. go to Bonterre Mine. And yep. I'm not plugging them. I wish they'd give me free dives there. <clears> well, but... I, I, I would throw out too at the right time of year for a recreational diver if you want to see what cave diving is like, uh, Bennett Springs. Yeah, Bennett yeah. Springs is yeah. the same. I mean, yeah. there are some really – and then – the Great Lakes is not that far away, yeah. and that has some deep shipwrecks there. Mm -hmm. So the dive signs aren't the problem. I would say more it's logistics. Yeah. Like even if I want to go down to dive the Ariscany down in Pensacola, Florida, yeah. we had to invest in a booster pump 
a bottle of O2. I mean, that's Zach, our Zach here had to. <laughs> oh, I started laughing. I was like, that's the other deal when you're talking about logistics in the Midwest. Like we, we are, can just we are swing very... by Amigos and just <laughs> fill our tanks with whatever we want. We like... are very much the minority here. Um, we got one shop. In, they, the K, oh, in the yeah, KC God. metro area where you can get high pressure O2. And they don't have it very often. <laughs> and I wouldn't even call that high or, pressure. That's not high you pressure. You have a friend. Or you have a friend. <laughs> or, or you do it yourself. <laughs> I, I mean, or you drive four hours and you find a guy with helium that has a booster pump and he can give you the right helium mixes you yeah. want. I mean, there's just... Yeah. Chuck. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I just think that some of the some of these divers that live in some of these places, they, yeah. they have some of these tech divers, they, do, they don't understand that if they're going to come here to dive some of the caves we have here, even the, the, mid, the, the shipwrecks up in the Great Lakes or dive the lakes around here or dive the mines. Or the caves, if your yeah. caves are... Yeah, right. and that's why I yeah. said the caves. Yeah. They don't realize, like you are going to have to put a lot of effort and call in a lot of favors to get the gases you want to get a scrubber. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's another hard, hard part. Yeah. Find a shop that sells the EAC canisters. They don't. You yeah, got to order them online. Pack, and, most of the time you're packing your own or. Well, even if you, you know. can find Zorb, you got to pack your own stuff or you got to order it and have it next day aired to your hotel here. Right. Like, so yeah, I would say logistics, but uh, Zach, I agree with you. It is also even the dive sites. It's just the logistics. It's, it's a lot more effort put into the dives in general. In my opinion. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're in Florida, not to beat the dead horse, but if you're in anywhere in Florida, you can do, yeah. a, you can do a warm water salt tech dive or a freshwater cave tech dive like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, th I think ultimately, I think if anybody who even it wants to get in a tech diving, just understand that if you live in the Midwest and you're a tech diver, you, you are going to run into some logistical issues. Yep. But that's why you start diving with a team. That's why you start getting with people because we help each other out. But that, I didn't, what I was going to say is that's also why our community here, the tech diving, very that's tight we're very yeah. tight. Yeah. Very tight. Because yeah. there are not many of us. No, that's and we, for sure. And we all have a shared cross to bear. Hundred percent, right? Chris. Based on what you were just saying, like, mm -hmm. is it, you know, with people who are interested in getting into tech diving, yeah. Um, what is some advice that you would give to someone who is interested in pursuing technical diving as either a hobby or a profession? Get with an instructor. Find an instructor, no matter what shop it's through, that is a tech diver. And and the reason why I say that because they're going to be able to give you the right direction on classes to start taking but I, but even if you can't do that i would say whatever even if you look it up on your own i would say in my opinion and this is what i try to tell my students if you get a dry suit cert don't go i've got a dry suit cert i'm dry suit certified now i'm going to move on to side mount and do my side mount and dry suit dive your dry suit every chance you get get comfortable in your equipment learn get the class and then dive what you just learned so you get to the point where you're very comfortable that'll just make your progression so much easier in my opinion i agree i've got the closing question here oh geez. and i think this is a doozy and i'm gonna it's gonna be a round table question okay all right scott give me another give me another shot <laughs> yeah the, take your time on this because this this is one that yes like I said, that was a just little. A shot. Yeah. yeah, that was just. A so shot. as divers, and I and I've always been a. Um, I've always said this that you will never find a sporting community more open and friendly than the diving community, be it rec or tech. Mm -hmm. But within that, <laughs> there are a lot of stereotypes that fly around, and yes. so. What are the most common stereotypes that wreck divers throw at tech divers and vice versa? Ooh. Oh, well, I can I can take this. You can start it off. Um I think I told you this right out the gate. I said yeah. you were gonna be looked at very differently yeah. once you became a cave diver, right? Yeah. yeah. And you even came back to me and you said you were a hundred percent right on that. I think I think a lot of recreational divers think that most tech divers are arrogant pricks. And, and, and I, you know, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Uh, we, we are our own worst enemy. Yeah. Um, even just talking, trying to, to educate. 
we sound arrogant. We over talk people. I've caught myself doing it in classes where I'm, I start over talking my students. It's because we have such a passion for this. It, it, it has, I don't think it really, I think with some, most people, it, most tech divers, it comes from just a passion for what they do. Yeah. However, we can look back on uh, shadow divers. Yeah. And you can, if you read that book or listen to that audio book, back Great in the book. day, there was, you know, the patch wearing, almost motorcycle gang esque wreck divers that just talked trash, drank heavy, partied hard, dove hard. And those guys were badasses. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. However, they set up a stigma about tech divers that we're all just a bunch of arrogant assholes. When the reality, I think, is most tech divers are very welcoming. But I think in a way, like as a, especially as a tech diver who's a recreational instructor, I almost have to come at it with more humility and, and, and more humbleness just to, just to kind of get past that stereotype that we're a bunch of arrogant assholes. Yeah. Just, just but, love diving, dive and let dive. Yeah. 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 Honestly, that's what it comes down to. Well, and, awesome. I think it was a good episode. What do you guys think? I had a I had a good time. I had a good time. Yeah. It's yeah. hot, but I had a good yeah, time. Yeah, I've been hot. sweating the entire time. My balls but... are moist. Yes. Yeah. Right. There's a Chris has a ball deodorant that Manscaped makes. <laughs> it's actually really good. It really is. I went and yeah. got some. It does a does because I bit, please, wipe my balls please and please put tell my me, hand. Please tell mouth. me it has a catchy name <laughs> like Manscaped. Well, no, I mean the ball it's deodorant. It's literally like... called. Like ball freshener, ball, ball deodorant. Like ball, it's, ball odorant. It's <laughs> ball odorant. That's awesome. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is called. It's I don't know. I don't use it that way. Sack Sensi. Sack Sensi. Sack Sensi. Give me a way. All of my friends have disappeared. You know it makes me wonder if I was ever here. Take a look at me I'm just a clown And on my face I wear a frown I've paid the cost